every day for the next 20 years. 10,000 baby boomers will turn 65. 79 million people redefining what it means to get older. The question is, who will be there to care for all these people? The answer? We will. Well, I think we are in a very important turning point for home health and hospice. Traditionally, we've been, you know, the guys on the sideline. The, the ones that, you know, basically were taking a back seat. And I think what's really exciting about today and where healthcare is going today is we're going to have a seat at the table. Although there are several challenges that, and hurdles that we'll have to overcome as an industry, and, and I'm very thankful we have an organization like CASA to help us attack those challenges and open doors to opportunities. We have um, basically the opportunity to, to, to paint our own picture, to develop uh, the way that we want to see it move forward. And, and where healthcare is moving, uh, home is where it's going to be at. And, and that's what we all do best, is taking care of people in their homes. Mary Alvarez has been a caregiver for 34 years. Like so many others in home care, she doesn't talk so much about her own accomplishments. It's about patients, clients. It's about people and making a difference. I, I just enjoy the people. It just, the elderly or young, just, I just enjoy the people. Doing home care, it's a lot different than if I was to work at a hospital. It's so much better going to their home, you know, and they're so comfortable being in their home. Some people, don't, they don't have, their family members are working, they're there by themselves, and they don't have anybody to talk to. So as soon as you come in, they just got this big old smile, and you know, if they're just great. Probably 80 to 90% of what I do for physical therapy isn't physical, it's mental. And 10 you know, to 20% is the actual physical side of stuff. And when you walk into somebody's home where they're very vulnerable and they've got um, something that's happened to them, and I deal with a lot, a lot of fear. So when you're dealing with going into somebody's home and you see that fear, and then when you leave, they're laughing, they're very glad you came, you've helped them in whatever tiny little way that it was, and you feel like you've made a difference. I don't think that I myself am gonna make a difference in a grand scheme of things, but making a difference in one somebody's life and knowing that it was just, you left it better, you left their place and it was better. Ray um, was a man who made a huge transformation in his life, so he was highly respected. I met him late in life. I met him, I was his last true love, and he was probably my first true love. We had this incredible existence, this incredible love, and this incredible life, and he kept saying to me early on, even when we were first together, you know, he would say, baby, in that voice, you know, baby, um, you know, I'm a lot older than you, it's likely that you're gonna be around without me. And I was like, you know, my hope is that we get hit by a Mack truck at the same time. <laughs> but that's not the way it played out. I mean, he got really sick. He got lung cancer. And the hospice team was with us for about four months. And when they knocked on the door, when those folks, <laughs> when they knocked on the door, it was, I've said this before to other people, it's like the cavalry was coming. I mean, I was gonna be dead, I think, before he was. I mean. We laughed about it, he and I, because I, you know, it's hard enough losing the person that you love, but watching and making sure they're not in pain or their meds okay, and you know, is the prescription gonna run out, and what should he be eating, and bum 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 bum. As a caregiver, I was going down. The hospice team would come in, and I could take a deep breath. They would talk with him. The, he loved the social worker. He loved the nurse. They had, we had a great volunteer, Jill, who came in and did massage for him. We had one volunteer he didn't like, so they didn't come back again. You know, and I was like, baby, I don't think I want that person. And I was like, okay, you know. I mean, we get to choose. The whole idea of hospice is that it's, it's the, for me anyway, I mean, I've learned, it was what we needed. And they just came in and kind of said, what do you need? The biggest role that hospice had in the journey that Ray and I took was to provide support. 
They didn't tell me what to do. They didn't tell him what to do. They were supportive. So the hospice philosophy for me is, is, has really, was really being taught. I was taught to make better choices, to make, uh, you know, the old serenity prayer. What can you change and what can't you change? And the wisdom to know the difference. And for me, hospice is the wisdom to know that this fight is, um, the fight is no longer working. So let's do a, something different. Let's celebrate life. Let's go through this with grace and dignity and love and light, and let's have a journey with love and happiness. When he died in my arms, the hospice team, you know, I was in constant contact with them that last night. They would have come at night if I wanted them to, but I was okay, I had friends there. The great part was he was on the couch and, I, and he woke up, and I didn't know that he was gonna wake up again. I thought maybe he was just gonna go into a deep sleep. Our bed was in the living room at that point, right under this big window and a bay window, and we were looking at the tamarack tree, and he woke, you know, he kind of woke up one more time and said, baby, I know this is hard. I know this was very hard, but thank you. Each year, as the elderly population increases, the number of people who need help will continue to grow. Many need less than total care. Some have supportive families, others don't. Some require more help than their families can give. Few of them want to be in hospitals or nursing homes. Most people, if asked, would prefer to age where they live, at home. And thanks to you, they will. To all who keep the memories of past generations safely in a pocket near their heart. To those who work to preserve the health and dignity of every human being and to all who cherish the wisdom that could only come with age. Thank you.